Hello, and welcome to Coffee on Korriban. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I am glad that you are here watching, and today I've got a very special guest with me, the master of Star Wars lore and nerd <laughs> things. This is my cousin, Tyler. And is hey. it safe to say that you are a huge Star Wars nerd? Uh, I think you got that wrong. Oh, man. Um, I like Star Wars, but I would not consider myself knowledgeable or a okay. nerd. Have you mm. been keeping up with the Bad Batch at all? No. You know what that is? Um... No, not really. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting. We're going to be doing a discussion of the Bad Batch episode 13, Infested. After we watch it, we're going to be doing our little discussion, talking about it. You're not going to have any idea what's going to go on. So it's going to be really interesting. We're going to watch the show now, and we will be back in just a minute with our discussion. But first, I'd just like to say I've been trying to avoid spoilers, but I did see one word in a thumbnail on YouTube. Yikes. I don't know what that could mean. It might be apparent after we see the episode, but anyway, we're gonna get into it right now and we will be back as soon as we watch it and make more coffee. All right, so that was The Bad Batch, episode 13, Infested. And I was trying really, really hard not to explain things to you. Like, oh, that's this group, and that's mm. this person. That's what all that does. It's really hard for me to not to explain that. But I, I did good. Didn't explain it to you. Yeah. And did you have any idea what was going on? Um, I could figure it out. Um, it seemed like they were a, a group that does jobs for the green lizard lady. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I kind of, with context, could figure out a little bit. First impressions of the show in general. What, you know, this probably isn't the best episode to introduce you to the Bad Batch, but um, what what are your thoughts about the show in general? Um, I do like the the art style, the uh, the way it's animated. It looks cool, um, and it does feel like Star Wars especially with like the screen wipe transition yes that star wars has always done yep. and um You're that opening correct. scene was really cool with the ship coming in and landing i say that almost every episode really? of coffee on Korriban is the ship that just the shots of them entering a city and yeah. stuff looks so cool with like the little dust clouds yeah and just the coloring the animation is is so cool in the show. I'm yeah. really happy you picked that out. Yeah, so that bird's eye view of the city, the ship landing looked really cool. I like the the feel of the city they're in. It reminded me of the Jack and Daxter games, Jack 2, mm -hmm. that city with the hover bikes flying through. They had hover bikes in there. I never played Jack 2. Oh. I played the Precursor Legacy, which was the best game ever. Yeah, it's definitely the best. But I'd never played the second one. Yeah, the city reminded me of that with the hover bikes and all the neon signs and the strange people roaming around. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I like the art style and the feel of the city for sure. And uh, it definitely feels like Star Wars. Yeah. So f at least in this episode, it's missing the lightsabers. And, right. Uh, everything else I've seen, like stormtroopers and the Sith and the Jedis, but... Yeah, it still feels like the Star Wars world. And that's always been my biggest thing is, does it make me feel like that's part of the Star Wars world? Could I go to that place in that show and feel like a Jedi could walk around the corner or, you know, they're going to recruit me to the Empire. I want to feel like I'm there. So I'm happy that this show is doing that for you off of the, just this little one taste that you got so far. I guess I'll just start off by saying this was a really weird episode. And I can see why that one guy on YouTube said, yikes. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just weird, and I'm sorry this was your introduction <laughs> to The Bad Batch. The show is so much better than this. It was just a weird episode. Um, it didn't feel like it had any bigger impact on the larger storyline. Um, definitely a filler episode. There was action, but it just was like kind of pointless action. It just filler. Nothing really significant happened. Like I thought maybe Sid was going to sacrifice herself 
for them to the crazy psychobats, mm -hmm. but she didn't, so there wasn't really any big consequences to anything in this episode. Yeah. That's what I thought would have happened too when they came down on the, the ropes and descended and they were attaching the box. Marta's sisters are with the pikes and just, I, I don't I don't like all of that. Could you kind of tell that the pikes were like the uh, drug cartel of space? The snake looking the guys? The snake looking guys. They yeah. look like cobras Yeah. with the, the shape of their head. It's a cool design. Yeah. And like their mouth doesn't move or anything. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of creepy. Their voice is all modulated. They've got like an ominous kind of They're presence. scared. They're scary. Yeah. yeah. They seem ruthless. They're basically like the drug cartel yeah. in Star Wars. Exactly. Yeah. And that is what they were doing was the smuggling spice, which is basically like the drug in mm -hmm. Star Wars. Man, those psycho giant bats were... I don't know, because they were scary, but at the same time, they didn't really do a whole lot except knock the cars off the track. Yeah. And you couldn't really get a size scale for them because at first I thought they were like bat size mm -hmm. but then they started landing on them and they're like man size mm -hmm. but it seems like if they were that many and they were man size they would have done more damage or been more effective yeah but it was just a little and their weakness is light yeah so a little iffy pretty easy to get rid of them yeah. just have a strong enough light yeah I thought they would be in way more danger though from those uh, insects yeah the bat things yeah the one character drops his flashlight down uh, and right. they're all like, oh, what did you do? That reminded me of Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings. In Ring. the Mines of Moria. In the Mines of Moria. Yeah, when, oh. When, I think it's Pippin, right? Yeah, and he just drops like, the lantern and it down. keeps making sounds. He's, it gets louder and louder. Yeah. Fool of a took. It reminded me of that scene and how bad of a situation that was for... Oh, because you hear fellowship. like the battle drums. Yeah. Drums in the deep. After you just read in the book, drums in the deep. Yeah. Oh. The, the bats didn't seem as scary as that. Correct. Yeah. Could have been. Yeah. Like they could, totally could have done something different yeah. with those bats and made it like actually perilous. Yeah. I guess. Like there wasn't any consequence to it. No. They, they all survived and we knew they were going to survive. Yeah. Not that I want Sid to disappear. She's not my favorite character, but she's okay. But I totally thought she was gonna sacrifice herself and that was her character arc, which would have been really cool because she started out really cold and she's kind of, you know, really quippy with how she talks to, you know, hey, goggles and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if she sacrificed herself, that would have kind of been a really cool character arc for her. Cold on the outside, but she's willing to actually make the sacrifice play. Mm -hmm. But we didn't see that. I guess those bat things were called Erlings. I'll have to look up and see if they're mentioned anywhere else in Star Wars. I've never heard of them before. I thought they were going to be like Kinraths, but I'll, I'll be interested to know if we've heard of those Erlings before in Star Wars. I certainly haven't. And also the guy, what was his name? The the bad guy with the horns. Do the you even remember? No. Was I don't either. the first time you've seen him? I So I saw another guy in, in Rebels, one of the other TV shows that I thought was him, but I think the mm. voice is different, so I don't think it's the same character. Hmm. You know, that guy doesn't seem so tough anyway. No. I mean, when he has his posse with him, all yeah. his, you know, bodyguards, he might be tough, but by himself, he seems pretty soft. When he had his horn cut off at the end, he just seems so ashamed yeah, and weak. which is something I was thinking of. Uh, I forget the name of their species, but I wonder if that's part of their culture, like if they lose a horn, that they're disgraced or mm. something. It could be. It could be. There's a lot of stuff like that in Star Wars where it's a culture thing if they if something happens then they're kicked out of their order mm. or something so i wouldn't be surprised if the reason that the pikes cut off his horn is because that disgrace would be worse than actually just killing him yeah so it very likely which is cool if if that's the little bit of information that we get a little bit of lore then that's cool but you know if that's the case they could have demonstrated that better yeah, exactly what you're saying. When he has all his bodyguards and stuff, he can tell people what to do, but just by himself, he's nothing special. Now, I can think of a bunch of ways that they could have made this episode more intense or more important or have a bigger impact on the larger story, but they just didn't. And I'm not one of the people to say that Dave Filoni does everything perfect and what he says is... something. And I know a lot of people are. They think that Dave Filoni is the second coming of George Lucas, which, 
Sure, if you want to think about it that way, but he's not infallible. And not that I made any videos about Clone Wars Season 7 because I didn't do Star Wars videos back then, but I did not like the Martez sisters, the whole thing with the Pikes. I just didn't care for any of that. So I'm not one of the people that say anything that Dave Filoni makes is perfect, but I have no problem in saying this was kind of a bad episode. And with mm. only three episodes after this one, it's like, you know, we should be like really ramping it up. You know, like <laughs> Clone Wars season seven, the last four episodes were just like, boom, 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 <laughs> just adding on top of each other to make it way more intense. And this one was kind of like poop. <laughs> Boring. It's boring a poop. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's old poop. It's yeah. Been sitting there a little while. I did like the uh, the minecart chase scene. That was a clever use mm. of that as a yeah. way to. I liked uh, the minecart chase scene. That was pretty clever. How uh, that one guy hopped onto the other minecart with the bad guys, mm -hmm. knocked him out, and then put it in Threw reverse. Threw it in reverse and it slammed it. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that was clever. And I like that people are actually dying because presumably those guys died they like fell yeah so, i mean it sounds weird to say i like the, that people are dying but it's cool that in an animated show they're actually doing gutsy stuff like that instead yeah. of like having them be knocked out or something yeah anyway that was pretty much the discussion for episode 13 of the bad batch it was i would say it's i right, but it wasn't really even i right. it was okay again hmm. i'm sorry this was your introduction for the Bad Batch. It's way, yeah. I promise it's way better. We'll wow. probably watch the first episode of The Bad Batch after this just to show you. Anyway, that's our discussion, and I'm glad you guys were able to tune into the show and watch our little discussion about this. And uh, if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate your time. Once again, I'm Timothy Allen Alenka with Coffee on Korriban, and I will see you wherever I happen to see you in the galaxy.